Roots Magic 7, What's New? The purpose of this presentation is to show you what is new in Roots Magic 7. If you decide you like the features presented here, you will be able to make an informed decision on whether or not to obtain Roots Magic 7, and also be able to answer questions our patrons might have. You cannot upgrade from Roots Magic 6 to Roots Magic 7. You can download a free version of Roots Magic 7, or if you want a few more bells and whistles, you can upgrade for about $20. It is always a good idea to have a personal database. If you have stories or journal entries that are sacred or sensitive or contain things about living people that you don't want to forget but don't want to be public just yet, you will want to consider one of the above programs. If you are keeping your tree on Ancestry or MyHeritage, for example, just know that if those companies decide to merge or sell out, the rules could change. Ancestry is already up for sale as we speak. Even if you don't know how to work in Roots Magic or Legacy or Ancestral Quest, if you just put your tree in one of these programs, at least it can be preserved, shared selectively, and moved around. There are basically five new things available now on Roots Magic 7. They are web links, data clean, quick groups, file compare, and publish online. I will briefly go over each one. Roots Magic is the only personal database that can search more than one website. Right now, it will find hints from Family Search and MyHeritage. Find My Past is working on it and may be available at a later date. Ancestry will be available to see hints sometime this year. As of April 2016, Ancestry is not available yet. Web hints are available in the free version. The rest of the things we'll be talking about in this presentation are found in the $20 version. First, we'll want to adjust some settings. Go to Tools and then File Options. Under General, type in your root person, usually you. Check LDS support if you're LDS. Here I would add Display Family Search ID beside your Roots Magic person. It's handy for your people to have matching numbers in both programs, so if you have to look somebody up in Family Search or Roots Magic, they will be easy to find. The drop downs give you some other options, and you can choose your date format and so forth. Click OK. Under Web Hints, you would want to check everything to get hints from Family Search and MyHeritage. You do have to check everything you want to apply. Confidence level means level of confidence that a fact is a match. They say 10 is a good number. A lower number will give you more hints. You do have to have an account to Family Search uh, for username and password to see their hints. And you would also have to have an account for MyHeritage. If you don't have an account, you may only see things that are free to the public anyway, like find a grave. Anything MyHeritage has to pay for, we would too. So it is best to have an account for MyHeritage to see their hints. Click OK. To see a hint, click on a yellow light bulb. When you do this, this box pops up showing what hints are available for this person. Under the column Pending, that means those are records yet to be reviewed and attached if they match. Confirmed means you already have them attached. So on Family Search, I have 10 total hints. Seven are yet to be reviewed or pending, and three are already in my sources. Here are the seven hints from Family Search on Ira Kogel. Click not a match if it isn't, or click under review and attach if you want to see it. This screen comes up, and I would attach the record under Iris Sources as I normally would in Family Search. Note that this source does not go directly into Roots Magic Source. It is attached to the Family Search Source Details page. If I wanted to go to my Roots Magic Sources, I click on this tree icon in Roots Magic beside their name. Go to Sources tab and check the sources in the Family Search on the right you want moved to Roots Magic. The same rule applies with MyHeritage, but there you would have to copy and paste the information from MyHeritage into Roots Magic sources. On MyHeritage hints, I have nine total hints, and those nine are pending. I will go and review and attach as I normally would in MyHeritage. When I finish, you can see that this screen, which shows me all my hints, are now confirmed both in Family Search and in My Heritage, and I don't have any hints pending. The light bulb on Ira Kogel now turns white, meaning I have resolved the hints on this person. We will next talk about data clean. This is a way to clean up all your names and places. 
Keep in mind, no program is perfect, but I was able to clean up some things quickly and easily. Go to Tools in the top toolbar and click on Data Clean. This box comes up and I can clean names or places. Under Names, I can choose everybody in my file or choose certain groups to clean. I am choosing everybody. When you clean up names, you can see in this box all the choices you have and you can customize it how you like. It is advised that you do not put a check mark by only clean a person's primary name because you want the program to catch nicknames and alternate names too. Click OK. So what you see in the blue band area is how the name read in my database and how it was cleaned up next to it. Put a check mark by each name you want cleaned. If it still isn't cleaned the way you want it, you can type in what you do want in the middle box. The Data Clean program put Elsie Rhea Anderson as the primary name and Leah Anderson as an alternate name. On David Senior James, the program recognized that Senior was a suffix and not part of the name. Here it recognized Polly as a nickname. After I put a check mark by everything I want cleaned, I hit clean checked names. When you finish, it shows the names examined, the names with problems, and the names cleaned, and you can just close the program. You would do the same with places where I have USA or US. I am choosing to spell out the word United States. Here you see it took out the commas, and you can see it took KS USA and spelled it out. It does spell out the word county, which I don't mind because sometimes I don't know if it's a county or a city, but you can change that. It capitalizes, it spells out any abbreviations. You can see here that sometimes it took the word of out and sometimes it didn't, but I can quickly hand delete it or run it through the cleaner again. After I put a check mark by everything I want cleaned, I hit clean checked places. For the most part, the data clean worked pretty good and I could clean up my data in just a few minutes. The next thing we will talk about is Quick Groups. This is found on the left side of the screen in this folder. Groups are nice to have if you want to send a particular family line to a relative or save a group you're currently working on. Maybe you want to mark everyone in the military or born in a certain country and so forth. There are lots of choices to choose from. When I click on Groups, this is the first screen that pops up. I can choose to make a new group, edit a group, delete a group, or rename it. I'm going to create a new one. Click on the new and then I chose to select people by data fields. I want to make a group for my mother's father's line which is in green. So because I have marked all my lines a different color already, I can just choose the green line and I can choose up to five other criteria if I want all males or a certain census record and so forth. But I just want to choose the green line for now, so I leave the rest blank and click OK. Give the group a name. Now I have my group named the Kogel line, but now I want to add one other person to it that isn't green. Right click on the person's name and click on Quick Groups and Hannah Mary Kogel is added to the Kogel group. If I want to make other changes, I click on the group icon and go to Manage Trees. It will bring up this first box again and I can change a group, delete, or rename it, or make another new group. We will not now talk about File Compare. File Compare is when you have two trees in Moots Magic for some reason and you want to put the same information in both of them. Maybe one is an older or imported from another place. Under File, choose Compare Files. This screen pops up and I'm going to compare a file called sample to my overhold file to demonstrate how this works. In the yellow box at the top of this page, you will see three columns. First column is the percentage, which means likelihood of a match. The next two columns are the two trees you're comparing. If the name appears in one column and not the other, it means the tree did not have this person's name in the other tree. You can bring people over from one tree to the other, but be careful with that because people could have slight differences and you would create a duplicate. At the bottom, put a check mark by only show people with differences. We don't care about the people who are the same. We only want to see the differences. Green colors mean the information is the same. Yellow means slight differences and pink means different. I will choose Mon Muriel Johnson to show you how this works. Any highlighted person at the top will show at the bottom. 
You see these little boxes to the left of each tree. You can check which information is the best and it will move over to the other side. Information goes either direction. In these red boxes you will see capital N for notes, S for sources, M for media. I want these to be the same in each tree. I will first check an N for notes. I can click on either tree and move it over to the other one. They both have family records as a note, but I want to add the other note on the left to the tree on the right. I highlight it and click on a pinned note since there is no note to replace. Now both trees have this note. Now I want to add or compare sources, so I click on the S. The one tree on the left has three more sources, so I put a check beside the ones to move over and click on Copy Checked Sources. Those sources are added with the click of a mouse. The blue eye is where I can go to see more details. Now to add media. Notice the tree on the right has no media. On the tree to the left, I might want to click on I for information to see the picture before I bring it over. When I do, I can see the picture. I can write a caption or description, date it, tag it, or edit it, or delete it. I can just click, I'll just click OK for now. I go back and put a check mark by each picture I want to bring over. That would be all of them. Click on Copy Checked Media. All my pictures are now in both trees. Be aware that you can click on the edit person in either tree and change information. Publish is the next thing I want to talk about. When Roots Magic says publish, that means putting your tree or trees on a server for other people to see. In previous versions of Roots Magic, you had to have an account and a password for each tree. Now Roots Magic has one server and that is data uh, driven. That means you have one account for everything. You can have up to 10 trees or a total of 100 megabytes divided between all your trees. You give your web address to those you want to see it. Go to Internet here at the top. If you have a previous version of Roots Magic out there, you could choose Generate Files for a Website and you can put your previous Roots Magic tree on your own server and you're good to go. The new sites on Roots Magic 7 are more sophisticated. Right now we're going to go create a new tree to publish online, so I choose the top one, My Roots Magic Publish Online. You first have to sign in to create an account. I put my email and password in and click Create an Account on RootsMagic.com. Click on Click to Publish a New Website. Give your tree a name and a description. I can add filters or I can hide people in certain groups, but I want to include everybody, so I won't put a check by filters. I can add a help screen for visitors. I can choose my date format and then I hit next. I can give my tree a name, an introduction, browse for a picture. I can put my contact information if I want that to be available, then hit next. Here I can choose to jet comma file. I can include notes and sources or photos or not. And here you can check privatize for living people, which is a good idea. I can also include web and text links. I then hit generate site. You have to agree with Roots Magic's terms and conditions before publishing. That just means you won't put out hate messages or inappropriate pictures. I then hit publish. This is the next screen you will see. My tree is named Example and I can see the size of my tree and when it was published. This is a web address I would give to others. I then hit OK. Under the red line you can see my family tree. When you want to change anything on your published tree, you will use these little tools. The magnifying glass is where you go when you want to see your published tree. The gears is where you go to change settings as your introduction or email or privacy settings and so forth. The errors are, so, are for refreshing your data. If you change anything in your tree, you can update it here. It will not change your settings. X means you delete that tree. If you do, the name that you gave your tree will become available for others to use. This is what a published tree might look like. This yellow tab is helpful to move around through your tree. It is a home page. Anybody visiting this tree can do all the things I am showing you, with one exception. The site settings will only come up the first time you go into your published tree. 
to make sure things came up as you requested. You can change things here if you forgot something. After that, you will have to go into your gears to change things in your tree. You will not see the Site Settings tab here again. So going into my tree under Name Index, I move the mouse under each letter to see all the people under that letter. Or I can type in, say, McNeil, and it will find all the McNeils in my tree. On the left is what a person page looks like. On the right is the help page that gives you instructions on how to move through the tree. Well, that concludes information on published trees. One more miscellaneous thing that I found quite nice, and that is adding media. I just brought up my file from my computer that had all my family photos on it, and I was able to drag and drop tons of pictures into my person page in Roots Magic in just a few seconds. If I had a large manuscript or journal, I could also drag and drop it into this media file just as quickly. So that concludes my analysis on the new Roots Magic 7 for now. Hope it helps you make some decisions. Have fun discovering!